When scientists first pieced together the story of humanity's dispersal into Eurasia, it appeared to be a single, dramatic leap, a wave of modern humans crossing the Red Sea around 60,000 years ago and sweeping across the continents. Yet new genetic and climatic evidence reveals a more complex and astonishing picture. According to new research published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, anatomically modern humans left Africa roughly 100,000 years ago and spent tens of millennia adapting in or near Arabia before venturing further. During this long period, which has come to be known as the Arabian Standstill, these early populations endured climatic catastrophe, genetic isolation, and powerful natural selection that forged the biological and behavioral foundations for humanity's later success across Eurasia. Far from being a smooth migration, the journey unfolded in two distinct phases— an early movement out of Africa around 100,000 years ago, and a later expansion into Eurasia 55,000 years ago. These were not the same event. Between them lay an extended incubation period, lasting 30 to 40,000 years, an evolutionary crucible during which our ancestors were effectively trapped between a green, life-giving Africa to the south and a frozen, forbidding Eurasia to the north. Indeed, 60,000 years ago would have been the worst time to migrate into Eurasia, according to Dr. Axel Timmerman. Uh, we have several migration waves out of uh, Africa. I don't like the word out of Africa. I will say uh, into Eurasia instead. Uh, so we had uh, several uh, major waves. Uh, in fact, the time period, which is very often uh, used by geneticists, uh, 60,000 years for the <clears throat> divergence um, is probably not really climatically a very good time period because this was a period where uh, Earth's axis, Earth, sorry, Northern Hemisphere summer was farthest away from the sun. So it was extremely dry in the Northern Hemisphere. And at the same time, also the Atlantic circulation collapsed, which creates very dry and cold conditions. So you can see this is really a, a, the worst time actually to, to migrate. During marine isotope stage 5, which lasted from approximately 130,000 to 75,000 years ago, the Earth entered a warm interglacial phase that transformed Arabia. Monsoon rains shifted northward, rivers flowed through what is now desert, and freshwater lakes dotted the peninsula. Archaeological sites in Arabia preserve Middle Paleolithic stone tools virtually identical to those of northeastern Africa, while fossil finds from the Levant, such as those at Skul and Kafzeh, dating to between 120 and 90,000 years ago, already show modern human anatomy. Genetic data support this phase as well. The divergence between African and non-African populations began roughly 100,000 years ago. The Arabian Peninsula therefore became the first true staging ground outside Africa, serving not merely as a passage, but as a region of population growth and adaptation. Climatic reconstructions show savanna-like belts extending from the Nile Valley through the Red Sea Corridor into central Arabia. For perhaps 20,000 years, humans thrived in this corridor of lakes and grasslands, but paradise would not last. Around 71,000 years ago, the climate turned abruptly colder and drier. Ice sheets advanced, sea levels dropped, and Arabia's rivers disappeared into dust. The monsoon system collapsed, isolating the peninsula from both Africa and Central Asia. According to the study, this was precisely when selective pressures on the human genome intensified. Mutations that conferred survival advantages spread rapidly through the population between 80 and 50,000 years ago, indicating strong environmental filtering. This shift coincided with two catastrophic events. The first was the massive Toba volcanic eruption in Sumatra around 74,000 years ago, which blanketed much of South Asia in ash and caused global cooling. The second was the onset of marine isotope stage 4 itself, a period of glacial aridity that stripped Arabia of its vegetation. Populations that had once roamed widely across the peninsula now contracted into refugees along the Red Sea coast, the Qatar-Bahrain archipelago, or the then exposed floor of the Persian Gulf, which at that time was a vast inland oasis, when sea levels were about 120 metres lower than today. It is here, 
beneath the waters of the modern gulf that humanity's standstill most likely occurred. In their analysis of over 1,500 ancient Eurasian genomes, the scientists identified 56 distinct instances of powerful positive selection, known as hard sweeps. These signals are present in ancient Eurasian DNA but absent in African samples. Remarkably, half of these adaptive changes had already reached high frequency before humans dispersed beyond Arabia. Statistical modelling places the beginning of these genetic adaptations around 80,000 years ago, ending near 50,000 years ago, an adaptive phase lasting roughly 30,000 years that the researchers describe as the Arabian standstill. The persistence of these genetic sweeps in all later non-African populations proves that they originated in the ancestral population that had already left Africa, but had not yet entered Eurasia. These people were not fully African, nor yet Eurasian. They represented an intermediate lineage forged in the Arabian crucible. The genetic evidence shows that these Arabian populations were adapting under intense environmental pressure. The genes most affected by selection are involved in metabolism, fat storage, brain function, and skin pigmentation, precisely the systems required for survival in a cold, arid climate. Some of these genes regulate thermogenesis, helping to conserve or generate body heat, while others control melanin transport and pigmentation. Arabia, far from being merely a crossroads, was a furnace in which modern humanity was reforged. By 60,000 years ago, the world was still locked in glacial cold. Marine records from the Gulf of Aden show sea surface temperatures roughly 4 degrees Celsius lower than today, while ice core records from Greenland mark this period as one of the coldest intervals of the entire Pleistocene epoch. For a small Arabian population surviving on the edges of desiccated oases, migration north into the freezing steppes of Eurasia would have been nearly impossible. Food webs had collapsed, deserts expanded, and the Levant was dominated by well-adapted Neanderthal populations. If modern humans had attempted a northward expansion during this period, they would have faced both formidable climatic barriers and competition from these entrenched archaic humans. Archaeological gaps between 70 and 55,000 years ago across the Levant and Iran confirm a long hiatus. The so-called failed migrations into Eurasia likely perished or were absorbed by Neanderthal groups. Ironically, the time that scientists once believed marked humanity's great migration around 60,000 years ago was in fact the least hospitable moment in prehistory for such a journey. While much of Arabia dried into desert, the Persian Gulf Basin became a rare refuge. Lower sea levels exposed a broad plain fed by the Tigris, Euphrates and Karun rivers, creating a fertile landscape known to archaeologists as the Gulf Oasis. Paleo-hydrological reconstructions show that freshwater springs and marshes continued to support life even through the most severe glacial phases. Here, the ancestors of all later non-African peoples could have persisted in small numbers perhaps only a few thousand individuals, isolated but resilient. This region was perfectly situated. It was protected from Saharan dust storms by the mountains to the west, shielded from the frozen Eurasian steppe to the north, and connected to the Indian Ocean through a narrow passage. In such isolation, genetic drift and natural selection would have acted powerfully. It was likely during this time that the mitochondrial DNA lineages that define all modern non-African populations first appeared. Their origin around 70 to 60,000 years ago marks the demographic bottleneck of this Arabian refugium. As the climate warmed again after about 57,000 years ago, moisture returned to the Levant and the Iranian plateau. It was only then that modern humans began to move northward once more. Along the way, they encountered Neanderthals and interbred with them between 50 and 55,000 years ago, as confirmed by genetic data from fossils in Siberia and Bulgaria. The Arabian Standstill study emphasizes that this mixing with Neanderthals occurred after many tens of thousands of years of isolation in Arabia. The gene flow was therefore a result of renewed expansion, not its cause. The Neanderthal contribution, approximately 2% of the genome in non-African humans today, entered the lineage that would soon sweep across Eurasia and eventually reach Australia by 50,000 years ago. Meanwhile, a sister group known as the Basal Eurasians may have remained closer to the Arabian Gulf 
later contributing ancestry to early farmers in the Fertile Crescent and to North African populations. This dual pattern helps explain why all non-Africans share a common genetic bottleneck and why the first European fossils of modern humans appear so suddenly around 54,000 years ago, already equipped with advanced stone tools and culture. Dr. Timmerman says that the movie and the anthropological concept out of Africa have a distinctly colonial flavour to them. Many African anthropologists are offended by the term out of Africa, which implicitly assumes a non-African perspective. Into Eurasia is a much more neutral term which describes the dispersal into new areas that were previously unpopulated by modern humans. For a long time, researchers treated into Eurasia as a single event around 60,000 years ago. Yet both genetic and archaeological evidence show that there were two separate moments. The first occurred around 100,000 years ago, when early humans left Africa during a warm climatic window and established themselves in Arabia. The second occurred around 55,000 years ago, when their descendants, after surviving the long standstill, expanded north and east into Eurasia, interbreeding with Neanderthals and spreading rapidly across the globe. The confusion arose because both events left genetic traces in later populations, but the first represented a period of isolation rather than expansion. The long pause between these events the Arabian standstill was not a time of stagnation but of transformation. The climatic sequence supports this revised view. During marine isotope stage 5, Arabia was green and teeming with life, allowing the first expansion beyond Africa. Between 180,000 and 80,000 years ago, fluctuating moisture patterns established stable populations across the region. Then, during marine isotope stage 4, from 71 to 57,000 years ago, the world entered a cold and arid maximum. This was the era of the standstill, the time when small, isolated populations clung to life in refuges and underwent intense genetic adaptation. By marine isotope stage 3, which lasted from 57 to 29,000 years ago, humidity returned and conditions improved. Humans dispersed north and east, interbred with Neanderthals, and gave rise to the first Upper Paleolithic cultures. The climatic record shows that the worst time to migrate was exactly the one once assumed to be the Great Migration, around 60,000 years ago, when the earth was cold and dry. The best times were both earlier, around 100,000 years ago, when green corridors opened, and later, around 55,000 years ago, when they reopened after the long freeze. Archaeological discoveries mirror this genetic story. Middle Paleolithic tools found in Arabia resemble African technologies from before the standstill, while a gap in the archaeological record during the coldest millennia corresponds to the period of isolation. After 55,000 years ago, the archaeological record suddenly bursts with innovation. Across Eurasia, complex stone industries such as the Aurignacian, Gravettian and Magdalenian emerge almost simultaneously. The Arabian standstill reframes the human story as a two-step process profoundly shaped by climate. It also helps to resolve long-standing paradoxes. The timing of the non-African genetic bottleneck matches precisely with 70 to 60,000 years ago, when isolated populations in Arabia were at their smallest. The presence of early fossils outside Africa, such as those from sites in Saudi Arabia dated to 85,000 years ago, are no longer seen as failed migrations, but as the early stages of this Arabian population's history. The sudden global spread after 55,000 years ago makes sense as a release after climatic improvement, rather than as an immediate consequence of leaving Africa. The submerged basin of the Persian Gulf may be the most critical yet least explored region in all of human prehistory. During the standstill, it likely hosted a patchwork of freshwater springs, estuaries, and grasslands teeming with animals and humans. If future excavations uncover Middle Paleolithic sites beneath its sediments, it could revolutionize our understanding of humanity's missing years. When the climate finally warmed around 57,000 years ago, the descendants of the Arabian refugium poured across Eurasia. Within 5,000 years, they had reached both the Atlantic and the Pacific. The rapid spread of the initial Upper Paleolithic period 
coincided with the end of this long imprisonment. Every non-African lineage descends from that small group of survivors who endured the glacial horrors of Arabia. Their genes carried the marks of both endurance and encounter, adaptation to cold, traces of Neanderthals, and memories of the deserts that shaped them. The Arabian standstill hypothesis transforms the simplistic story of humanity's exodus from Africa into a deeper and more intricate tale. Around 100,000 years ago, early modern humans stepped into a green Arabia, a vibrant corridor teeming with life. Then the world froze. For tens of millennia, they huddled in refuges near the Persian Gulf, evolving in ways that would define the species forever. By 55,000 years ago, equipped with new physiology and resilience, they emerged into a warming world, met their Neanderthal relatives, and spread to every corner of the earth. The true miracle of the human story is the 30,000-year standstill that forged the genetic foundations of modern humanity. Arabia was not a mere way station on the road to Eurasia. It was the crucible in which humans became what we are.